How's it going, my good friends? So, uh, this time we're going to make the actual Astrolab a device. And uh, if you haven't seen the previous video, I was just talking about the design, how we, what is an Astrolab basically, and how do you use it. And uh, so, if you haven't watched it, you don't have to. I mean, it's a cool, cool video with nice, nice fancy animations. <laughs> Kind of. Uh, anyway, so um, yeah, let's get to it, and uh, I will do the intro again because I think because I liked it. So yeah, let's let's get to it. Okay, so we're gonna clean it up. So we will try to give to give the tin the, the toner best chance to stick to the metal. Whoops.
Okay, so I wasn't super happy with how uh, the skulls sounded like, and it was a bit jiggly and all of that, and I think I sort of uh, fixed it. Uh, I've changed the driving wheel, and I also fixed the lager a bit more properly in place, and I think now it works much better, and I was... If I find a bed that really suits this thickness of material, maybe I find something slightly better. So what I need to do is to transfer both the plate and uh, the Riti templates or whatnot. Now originally I want the plate to be on the steel plate and the Riti on the brass. However, the Riti has much more fine and fragile pieces or shapes or whatnot. So yeah, so I'm going to use the steel for the Riti and the brass for the plate behind. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult to cut, uh, but it should take the engraving a little bit finer and nicer, so. Yeah, I hope it will work, let's see. We will see. So I've cut it in such a way that I can hold it with some a masking tape. It's gonna clean the metal a little. Well, it's a bit pale, but it's there, so I think we're gonna go with that. All right, so now we gonna give it a go with the engraving. Now I want to put it on my ball vise, but uh, this piece is a little bit too big to hold, so I put it on the regular vise. Uh, I can still swivel it, but it's not centered, and also, um, besides making my life a little bit difficult, I also cannot shoot it very nicely because I'm, look, I'm over here, so. But we'll make it somehow. So, uh, we're ready to get with the cutting adventure and uh, I have this pretty thin and delicate blade so I can have some control but that also means that it's gonna be pretty slow. But we'll see, if it's too slow I will go for a more aggressive blade. I don't have my cutting fluid just yet but uh, I have some oil so we'll see how that works.
So this, that's the finished rule, ruler or whatever. And so I hope you understand what the point of it is that, yeah, you can side through. Wait, there we go. Okay, my friends, the moment of truth has come and uh, we're ready to assemble this. Well, it's the moment of truth for you because I assembled this like 50 gazillion times <laughs> to try to work out if it uh, fits or not. Anyway, so let's just uh, assemble it and take it uh, outside. Well, not now outside because there's no sun yet. I'm still waiting for that to happen. Whoop. Sweet. So yeah, that's the device and uh, yeah, let's give it a go and test it out. Okay, so I was having lunch and I had to stop immediately because uh, I have a very short time of having a son because the last few days were just everything was gray. So I'm going to take a reading really quickly and try to, uh, I mean, as you can see, the sun is not super clear. But it should be good enough uh, yeah, for now because I can uh, hopefully sight this uh, 
Yeah, I think I can manage to say this. So, what I need to do is to align these two dots together. You see, I have these two dots here. Boom! I will try to put this on the camera. Now the sun is behind a cloud at the moment, so I'm gonna wait like a second. It should come any minute now. So here comes the sun. Okay, I need to be quick. Uh, so there we go. We align it. Oh, we're pretty close actually already. Okay, can you see that this, the light shining through the hole? Uh, that means we are just about the right angle. Yeah, we're, we're just about right. So we got uh, 10. So we got 20 degrees. Okay, so now after we have collected the data, and by that I mean this white piece of paper that says sun 20 degrees on it, we can figure out uh, what time it is throughout the day. You can figure out some other stuff, but that's what we are going to do now. And so in order to do that, we have to basically figure out where the sun is and put it in the right location on the device and the device will tell us the rest. So, uh, in order to make things a bit simpler, I will take this apart. Okay, let's start with the RITI. So the RITI basically shows us all the star locations in the, in the sky, as well as the sun. But the sun moves throughout the year, so we have a ring that represents that. And on the ring, we have all the zodiac signs, which corresponds to you know, different months or whatever. And so today is the 26th of uh, January, which is right in the beginning of Aquarius. And that we can find here, and uh, it's called Aldulu in Arabic, and it's right after Capricorn. So I'm just gonna mark it with a marker that I can remove later. So now we have the sun location year-wise, like which date is it today? And we need to figure out the exact time during the day, so for that we have the plate. And so the plate is basically a projection of the skies, and here is the horizon line, so on top of it is the visible sky and below it is the ground. And so what we are looking at is this point right here is the zenith point right above our head, and the rings around it are altitude lines, well in relation to us that is. And because we took uh, 20 degrees, so we need to look for that altitude line, which is the one over here. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Now we can assemble everything back together. Okay, so now we simply need to take the sun that we know where it is yearly, annually, I suppose, and uh, we move it to the 20 degree altitude line that we marked. So now we can take the Alidad or the ruler and move it to that specific location and that should tell us what the time. Now this ring, on this ring the hours are not written but basically it represents the 24 hour uh, day cycle I suppose which means the bottom here is uh, midnight and the top is noon. So we only need to count down which is uh, every 5 degrees is 20 minutes, so that's 20, 40, 60, whoops, that's somewhere around here, where is it, right over there, and that's uh, shy of 11 in the morning, and I took a shot of uh, a watch right after we took the reading, and as you can see it said uh, 11, 18, so that means we are uh, 30 minutes off, but to be honest, for uh, like a more than a thousand year old device, that's pretty good, and take under consideration that we also didn't take the measurement that accurate. We just said 20 degrees or so, and if it were 21 degrees, probably we would get a much better result. So yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a cool thing and does get you pretty accurate and pretty cool stuff. I mean, if you were in the Middle Ages going to a tavern or something with this kind of thing, people would uh, definitely burn you on the stake for being a witch or something. But... Uh, yeah, you'd be a down fancy smoking witch. So let's wait until night and hopefully we can see some stars, but uh, you never know, it's pretty foggy outside. So unfortunately there were no stars today. Uh, well, there were stars, but it was foggy and cloudy and I couldn't see absolutely anything. Um, 
But no worries, I still have one trick up my sleeve, uh, which is using a tablet. I mean phone. Okay, so I thought I could use the phone to kind of uh, sight the stars through the phone. And it is possible, but it's kind of, uh, well, meaningless, I should say. Because the phone, well, the angle of the phone would be the angle that we set uh, the sights on our astrolabe. I mean, you know, just like, okay, so it's like straight to the phone. That wouldn't really work and wouldn't be that magical. So what we're going to do instead is to take the measurement that we've done yesterday with the sun and basically figure out where are the star located in the skies. So what I'm going to do is pick up a star and I will take this one, which is Altair, I think you pronounce it. Uh, or oh, the Flying Eagle, that's a pretty cool name. And uh, we'll look up online where this star should be, so we can see how close we can get with the astrolabe. So if you look at this site, we can find this star right there, and it is at 46 degrees altitude, and its azimuth is at 173 degrees. All right, so let's have a look at our astrolabe and see how close we got with our uh, measurements. So the first thing we need to do is to put the sun's location back to the right place, which is 20 degrees. That's our sun over here. I'm just going to mark it again. So it's here on the 20 degrees because now it's 11 o'clock or so, something like that. And uh, we can have a look at our star, which is that one over there. And I'm just going to mark it just about on this line right here. So to make things a little bit more clearer, I'm going to take this apart once again. And I only need to use the plate now. So this is the result we got, and that's our star location. And so we can have a look at our altitude and azimuth and figure out if we are correct with the result on the website. And so our altitude is, if this is 20, here is like zero, and this is 90 degrees. So we're just about 45 degrees, which is awesome. That's really uh, almost exactly what we got. And then our azimuth, which are these spider legs kind of lines over here. This here is north, so that is zero degrees. And here is south, which is 180 degrees. That's east and that's west. And so uh, our location is, yeah, just about between 170 and 180 degrees. And this is almost exactly what we should get, which was 173 degrees. So, uh, yeah, you can see that it's quite amazingly accurate, this device. And bear in mind that this is more than a thousand years old. So, so yeah, that's pretty cool. We got very, very close. Now I'm just going to uh, wipe this off. So, my friends, uh, that's it for this project. I really, I really love this device. It's, it's quite hefty. It has a, it has a weight to it, uh, which is nice. It feels like the real thing. You know what I mean? Well, it, I mean, it's the same material, so I suppose it needs to feel somewhat heavy. But yeah, I had so much fun, and I probably couldn't have done this without the new scroll saw that uh, I've built, and uh, I'm quite surprised that it does work as well as it does, and I'm super happy that. It's uh, pedal operated. It's, it gives me a lot of control, and and this this can get to quite a, a decent speed. Uh, I think I I, I uh, tried to clock myself, and I got to about, and I calculated that it can do like uh, 800 RPMs, which is pretty pretty decent. I wouldn't expect such a machine to do that kinds of speed, but it's around. Um, but it gets around the middle to low speeds of an actual uh, power scroll so so that's pretty cool uh, and uh, and it also can go backwards that's whatever so anyway uh, that's about it and i will see you again in the next video so i hope you enjoy this one and have fun